If you're a man who keeps asking, how can I get bigger, longer, or add more girth? You're not alone. And today, I'm going to answer that with evidence, not hype. I'm Dr. Fiona Gray, men's sexual health specialist. And just a quick note, I left links to my top two supplement picks for strong erections and performance in the comments below, and I'll explain later why they are absolute game changers. Now, let's talk truth about size and the science behind penile lengthening. Did you know a survey of roughly 50,000 heterosexual men found that 55% were unhappy with how their penis looked, while 85% of their female partners were satisfied with their partner's genitals? At the end of the day, how you feel about your body matters, but our modern reference points are skewed. Pornography has badly blurred the lines of normal. When you step away from those distortions and look at aggregated medical data, the average erect penile length is about 5.2 inches. Normal covers a wide range around that mean, roughly within 2.5 standard deviations above or below, so there's a lot of healthy variation. What's considered abnormally short, true length concern, is an erect length under about 2.9 inches, termed micropenis. Micropenis is rare. Prevalence is on the order of 0.14% and is usually associated with congenital or hormonal conditions, prior surgeries, or cancer treatments. Today, I'm focusing on men with medically normal length who still feel distressed about size. Here's the clinical reality I see every week. Most men who worry about size fall within the normal range, but a significant number experience real distress about perceived smallness. That distress can rise to the level of body dysmorphic type concerns, what we colloquially call small penis anxiety. That doesn't mean the penis is small. It means the anxiety is large. The markers we look for include persistent preoccupation with size, often more than an hour a day thinking or checking, intrusive comparisons, avoidance of sexual situations, and in severe cases, disruptions in work, relationships, and self-care. A small fraction of men become so overwhelmed they present to hospital in crisis or develop suicidal ideation. This is serious. It deserves compassionate, evidence-based care because this is men's health. Another reason to have an honest conversation, if you type how to make my penis longer into a search bar, you'll be flooded with dubious claims, unregulated fixes, and offers from non-licensed providers, often abroad, that can leave men with permanent harm. Please don't do that to yourself. If size concerns are causing distress, your first stop should be a reputable urologist and often a psychologist who understands body image and sexual anxiety. Before I outline options, I need to put one professional statement on the record. The Sexual Medicine Society of North America, SMSNA, states that surgical procedures for penile lengthening or girth enhancement are not recommended and should be considered experimental, except in the specific context of micropenis. The techniques I'm about to describe appear in urologic literature and some have limited data, but none are routine care for otherwise normal anatomy. If you are considering any intervention, establish care with a urologist who is familiar with this field. Understand risks, benefits, and the strength of the evidence, and avoid irreversible steps until you've had counseling and a sober look at the data. Broadly, reported approaches fall into two buckets non-surgical methods and surgical methods. Non-surgical options include psychological counseling, penile traction, extenders, vacuum erection devices, and injectable procedures. Let's take those in turn. Psychological counseling is not a throwaway suggestion. It is first-line care. We have validated questionnaires and structured assessments that help recalibrate expectations, educate about true normal ranges, and address the distorted mirrors that amplify shame. In multiple reports, a large majority of men who underwent counseling alone, no devices, no procedures, no longer pursued any further enhancement. That is big. If anxiety is the driver, treat the anxiety before you treat your penis. Your mental health, your relationships, and your sexual function will all benefit. Of the device-based options, 
penile traction, extenders, has the best, though still limited, supporting data for length change. A traction device typically consists of a base ring that sits against the pubic area, two telescoping rods that provide controlled outward force, and a glands holding mechanism, often a silicone loop or soft strap. The principle is slow, sustained mechanical traction over months, prompting tissue remodeling. In studies where men wore traction devices for several hours daily, every day, over many months, measured flaccid stretched length, a standard urologic proxy for erect length, increased by about two centimeters on average. Flaccid length increases were also noted. That is a real but modest gain, and it requires extreme compliance. Hours per day, nearly every day, for months. Reported adverse effects include transient numbness, skin irritation or bruising, and in some men, no measurable benefit despite diligent use. If you choose to try traction, do it under medical guidance, use a reputable device with clear instructions, and stop if you develop pain, persistent numbness, or skin injury. Vacuum erection devices, VEDs, are excellent tools for erectile rehabilitation and can help with rigidity by drawing blood into the corpora, but they did not increase penile length in trials. They remain useful for many men with erectile dysfunction. They are simply not lengthening devices. Penile injections for lengthening or girth are a different category, and this is where the strongest caution is warranted. Various substances have been injected over the years, fillers, oils, fat, even industrial materials. Complication rates in case series range from distressing to catastrophic. Ulceration, scarring, deformity, infections, granulomas, loss of tissue, and delayed disasters decades later. I do not recommend any injection into the penis for cosmetic enhancement, full stop. Newer, more controlled fillers are being investigated for girth in select settings, but the long-term safety data are not there. Even when short-term volumizing looks acceptable, migration, nodules, and scarring can emerge later. If you're tempted, talk to a urologist first and wait for robust, long-term data, not marketing. Surgical approaches have been described for decades and include suspensory ligament release, various advancement flaps, grafts, and even rib cartilage constructs. The idea behind suspensory ligament release is to divide the ligament that helps tether the penis to the pubic bone. By releasing that internal tether, more of the internal shaft can drop externally, creating an apparent length increase. In practice, the outcomes are inconsistent, the risks meaningful, and patient satisfaction mixed at best. Other more complex reconstructions, flaps, grafts, cartilage, have similarly poor and poorly reported outcomes in the literature. Selection bias, small series, lack of standardized measurements, and incomplete follow-up. Complications include scarring, deformity, loss of stability, the penis can angle down or be less stable for penetration, altered sensation, wound problems, and cosmetic results that men regret. At this time, we cannot recommend cosmetic lengthening surgery outside of very specific indications. The only time to consider any surgical approach is within a carefully designed clinical trial at a center with an institutional review board, IRB, overseeing safety. An IRB ensures the protocol is ethical and monitored, adverse events are recorded and reviewed, and results, good and bad, are published honestly, so patients and physicians can make informed decisions in the future. If a surgeon suggests a routine cosmetic lengthening surgery outside a trial, get multiple second opinions. Your long-term function and form matter more than a promise. So where does that leave you? Bottom line, there isn't much you can safely do to change the length you were given. Penile traction may offer a modest increase when used diligently under guidance. Vacuum devices support rigidity, but don't lengthen. Injections for enhancement carry unacceptable risks. Surgical lengthening outside of micropenis or reconstructive indications remains experimental with high complication rates and low satisfaction. First and foremost, address anxiety with a qualified mental health professional who understands male body image. 
Correct the distorted perceptions before you pursue irreversible steps. Men who skip this often end up chasing risky procedures that leave them worse off, disfigured, dysfunctional, and deeply regretful. And a few practical notes I share with patients who feel small but are within normal range. Trim the pubic hair and improve posture. Both increase visible length instantly. Reduce suprapubic fat with consistent exercise and nutrition. Even a small fat pad reduction reveals more shaft. Focus on erection quality, sleep, strength training, cardiovascular fitness, and managing stress all improve blood flow and rigidity. Learn technique and confidence. How you use what you have matters far more to your partner's pleasure than a half inch on a ruler. And remember that most female orgasms depend on clitoral, not vaginal stimulation. Being skilled, present, and generous is far more attractive than chasing centimeters. I'll close where I began. If performance is part of your worry while you're sorting the facts, some men like to add natural support for blood flow and stamina. Two that patients frequently ask me about are organic watermelon extract, L-citrulline, to support nitric oxide and circulation, and an advanced performance formula that combines Icarian, Tonkarali, fenugreek, nettle root, and citrulline to support erections, stamina, testosterone, and prostate health. These are not lengthening agents. They're performance supports that some men find helpful alongside lifestyle pillars. You'll find links in the comments and video description. Take care of yourself, be skeptical of shortcuts, and choose interventions that protect both your function and your peace of mind. You are worth that care.